Hi, my Mustang friends. Miss Turner here, and I'm going to be reading chapter 30 of uh, The Adventures of a South Pole Pig. That sledge you're building is more than just a toy, isn't it? It was the captain's voice. Alaric and the two men were sitting on their beds. Flora looked around. Where were Oscar and Sophia? She inched toward the door. I hate being hungry all the time. And if the others don't make it back, Alaric had a hammer in his hand. He began scraping at the floor of, of the snow shelter with the claw end, but then stopped and tamped the loose snow back into place. You said there was a food station three days out and that it's not needed now for the expedition. I'd like to go find it and bring supplies back. Well, by now you probably know how to use the sun and stars to navigate from watching the crew, the captain said. And of course, the dog has already been there. These sled dogs have an amazing ability to remember their way back to a place they've already visited. And Oscar is one of the best. But even for me, with all of my experience, it's extremely dangerous, even, even reckless, to head into, the in, into that inhospitable terrain alone. Besides, I'm not convinced the dog is well enough to pull. It'll be a heavy load when the supplies are added. But Oscar looks almost like his old self. Alaric thumped the side of his boot with the hammer. The captain hesitated. Let's discuss this again in a few days. My health has been improving steadily. I should be the one to make the journey. Flora shook her head. Oscar was looking much better, but he was hardly back to his old self. And the captain? would be lucky if he could even stand without help in a few days. We don't need more food, the sailor poked a stick into the snowy floor. Why don't we just eat the pig? Flora felt the hairs on her neck stand up. She measured the remaining distance to the door. She could make a run for it if the sailor got any ideas about jumping on her. That pig saved my life. It was the captain. Well, it could save your life again, Captain, and I know just the recipe. The captain did not answer. Flora slipped out and walked until the camp was very, barely visible. She wished she could just keep walking. She was so tired of being afraid. Later that morning, the captain was dragged out to his place against the shelter. Tell me if you see something that will make this thing glide better, Alaric said to him. Then looping the rope over his neck and under one shoulder, he gave the new sled a pull. Oscar followed, woofing. When Alaric didn't stop, Oscar ran in front and almost tripped the boy until Alaric took the loop off and placed it around Oscar. The big dog now walked like a king, pulling the sled with his head high. About 10 steps later, the loop slipped off his chest and down to the snow. Oscar picked it up in his teeth and dragged the sled another few steps, making everyone laugh. Flora couldn't help but smile too. I feel better already, Oscar flopped down beside her. He looked better, although he was breathing hard. Pulling is like medicine, Flora finished. I know, you've told me already. Yep, said Oscar, and I've been needing a dose of that medicine for a long time. After a quick rest, Alaric brought out a second rope. Flora's heart jumped, but he tied the new rope to the sled and made a loop for himself. He adjusted Oscar's rope so it wouldn't slip off. Together, they pulled the sled in a tight circle as a team. Flora couldn't stand it any longer. She trudged away again, this time far into the white until the sounds from camp faded. She looked all around. It was so strange to feel trapped in the middle of, such, of so much open space, but that was exactly how she felt. When she finally followed her tracks back, the sled was gone and so was everyone else except the captain. He had fallen asleep sitting up. Flora lay down at his side. 
They both, both woke to a loud whooping. The sled seemed to be returning from a trial run. Sophia hopped off as they came to a stop and batted playfully at Oscar, who was pulling the sled by himself. Alaric had made him a sort of harness out of smaller ropes. Oscar looked happy, but tired. Alaric helped the sailor stand up from where he had been sitting in the bottom of the box and then unhooked Oscar. Sir, Alaric walked up to the captain and saluted. We've practiced with extra weight in the sled, a fully grown man plus me, and the dog did fine. I know you wanted more time to consider, but we don't have time. I'd like permission to go out in search of the food stores. The captain looked at his boots. Oscar joined the boy in a lyric, reached down and patted him on the ribs. I had the strength to help Oscar pull if need be, but I'm not getting any stronger on the little bit of food we get each day. The captain shook his head. My mind is made up. It's no job for a boy alone. We'll devise a plan in a few days. Alaric crossed his arms. He looked bigger and more confident than the boy Flora had met the first day on the dock. I know I'm only a cabin boy, but you were the one who said you never know where brains and talent will come from. It might be time to find out. No, the captain's voice was kind but firm. Permission denied. I would be sending you to your doom. Yes, sir. Flora was surprised at how easily Alaric seemed to give up. The boy looked around at the fading light. It's time to get inside, sir, and have a bite to eat. It's too cold for you out here. Alaric covered the captain's legs with a blanket and gently pulled him into the snow shelter. After Alaric dished out the evening meal, he tucked more blankets around the captain while everyone got ready for bed. Flora lay down at, again at the captain's side. Keep him warm, pig, said Alaric. Flora woke in the middle of the night. She listened for the sound that had awakened her, but all was silent. She raised her nose to sniff the air and then cocked her head and listened again. The captain was breathing slow and steady. The sailor was snoring loudly, but something was different. Alaric and Oscar were missing, and so was Sophia. Flora stepped outside quite quietly so as to not wake anyone. She looked around in the half light. The sled was gone, but the runners had made clear marks in the snow, disappearing in a straight line into, a, into the great wilderness. Flora knew that this was no practice run. No matter what the captain had said, Alaric and Oscar and Sophia were off on their brave quest and they had left Flora behind. Okay, guys, that's the end of chapter 30. I hope you have a great break. See ya.